Chartered in 1984, Michigan's only accredited tribally controlled institution of higher education is Bay Mill Community College in the Upper Peninsula. We're visiting with the president, Dr. Martha McLeod. Dr. McLeod, tell us, how did this get started uh, in 1984? Well, we had a small vocational educational grant from the federal government, and we had 11 students in the basement of the tribal center. Uh, the tribal uh, government then thought that we should try to form a tribally controlled college. We went through uh, a needs assessment with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, we passed the needs assessment, we got funding, and we're chartered in 1984. Since then, we've had a more than 200% growth rate, and we've gone from 11 students to more than 600. And uh, we are fully accredited by the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools. Tell us a little bit about the governing board, because it is, uh, I, I gather, a governing board selected from the tribes? Uh, the governing board uh, is set by the charter. There are five members from the Bay Mills Indian community, a member from the Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians, the Grand Traverse Band of o o Ottawa and Chippewa Indians, the, uh, uh, the director of the Intertribal Council of Michigan, and very importantly, the student body president, who is a voting member of the Board of Regents. That is important, and that's kind of unique somewhat in the state of Michigan anyway. We'll talk about the student population. You said you've grown uh, significantly, but tell us about the students who attend the, the college. Well, the students come from everywhere, and uh, we are about 60% Indian, 40% non-Indian. Uh, we have about 350 to 400 students on our present campus, which is much too small, and we're planning on building a new one. And we have online degrees um, in early childhood, uh, and most of our students in those degree programs come from uh, Alaska, Washington, and Oregon. So the student body is diverse and spread out all over the country. Now you're a two-year institution. You offer both academic parallel as well as career-oriented programs? Absolutely. We have partnerships with uh, four-year institutions such as Ferris State University, and students can come to Bay Mills Community College and get their K-8 teaching certification, 100 credits from Bay Mills, 30 from Ferris State University, and you have your K-8 teaching certification and a bachelor's degree for under $15,000. The idea is to serve people in the UP and make it possible to go to school here and afford to get your degree. In addition to the unique location being overlooking Lake Superior and all, uh, I know when you, when you talk about to the community, this is an institution that community service is at the very center of it. Uh, one of our... Um charters from the tribe is cultural preservation and we have the Ojibwe Language Institute offered every summer where people immerse for six weeks to relearn the Ojibwe language and the students from that institute wrote a book which was published last year called Jingamuk which is a one-year curriculum for people teaching Ojibwe in the public school system. Mm. It's really neat. Sounds like it. Let's talk a little bit about the funding. Obviously, I've never met a university or a college president that didn't have some thoughts about the funding of higher education. Uh, tell us a little bit about the funding at Bay Mills. Uh, Bay, our base funding is from the Bureau of Indian Affairs under the Tribally Controlled Community College Act, and we get a whopping $3,000 per student if we're lucky. Um, obviously, that isn't enough to run on, and so we have tuition. And then, like most colleges and universities in the state of Michigan, we go to grants and foundations for funds. We have been very successful. And that has made it possible for us to build a new library heritage center, which was funded by the American Indian Higher Education Consortium and the American Indian College Fund. And it makes it possible for us to serve those we need to serve. This year, for the first time, we offered community health representative training for Indian Health Service. And 25 students from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan came here, and we got the contract to do the training. We think that's neat, too. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the challenge of funding, which all higher ed has, uh, as you look uh, at your institution and, and sister institutions, what really do you, do you see as some of the challenges that we're facing in higher ed today in America and Michigan? Well, always, it's being able to take the students from where they are to where they want to be. And always, it seems in education, you do it on a limited budget. So you have to have a student-centered institution that's going to focus on giving the students what they need, and you have to find the right faculty and the right staff that really care. We have been extremely lucky that way. And I think 
most community colleges have this kind of focus which is student centered then you have to figure out how you're going to afford to do what they need to do and partnerships are probably the best way we partner with Lake State we have partnered with Ferris State University uh, we partner with the Michigan Rural Systemic Initiative we have the you can be a scientist program and this year uh, Amber Shaw a Bay Mills member did her internship at the Goddard Space Institute in Washington DC and she's come back so enthused she's going on to Michigan State so that's what we do and that's how we do it. And funding is always the issue. We need a new campus. The tribe bought us 40 acres, but it is tremendously expensive to build a new campus. So we, uh, we have a capital campaign going and we will have to get enough money so that we can build a campus worthy of our students. Right now, the, they're in a remodeled fish processing plant. We have three wings, uh, an old library, a new library and dorms, and a beautiful site that isn't big enough parking problems, all the rest of it. We'll make do, we always manage. But someday, there'll be a brand new beautiful campus because they need one. I guess one of the questions as we look at this, uh, this area, uh, as your students complete their education at your institution, maybe going to another institution for advanced degrees and all, uh, is the concern that maybe these students are going to leave the area or will they, will they come and continue to work in the tribal communities? Well, I think the Upper Peninsula is a growing economic unit. Uh, it has, uh, thanks to the tribe's economic expansion and the community's response to that expansion, there are more jobs in more areas than there ever were before. We hope that our students will be able to come back, that the teachers will come back to the school systems in the UP, or at least the northern half of the lower. We know with our beautiful golf course that there are jobs here for people. We know in the casinos and in the uh, tourist industry, uh, there are many things that our students will be able to do. Most youpers don't want to leave. Not all our students are youpers, but most people want to stay close to home if they can. And we focus our curriculums on what's needed. Now this year we have uh, begun offering a uh, corrections officer, uh, criminal justice associate degree. Uh, for a couple of years now we've offered the 15 credit certificate needed to get the job. Now as the requirements for those officers increase, we are increasing our offerings and now have a degree program. Everything is focused on where there's going to be a job in the end. Teachers, uh, corrections officers, business administration, one of our biggest, early childhood education working in Indian Head Start and in preschools around the state. All of those things we focus on because there has to be a job at the end. Our, our average student is 35 and they want jobs. While we said that Bay Mills is the only uh, tribally controlled institution of higher learning in the state of Michigan, are there a lot around the United States that are tribally controlled? Well, there are other tribally controlled um, institutions starting up in Michigan, but they're not yet accredited. There are 30 other tribal colleges nationwide. They spread from Bay Mills, which is the easternmost tribal college, to Northwest Indian College in the state of Washington, which is the farthest west. As part of the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, we work together so that our students who are a unique group and our institutions are unique, uh, so that we can grow together to meet those needs of the students. All tribal colleges serve all peoples and so we are open to everyone. Well, it's very obvious, uh, President McLeod, that you not only look on this as a job, but a passion. You certainly have some very strong, passionate feelings about this. Listen, when you come to Bay Mills, and if you'd like a job doing adjunct instruction, <laughs> come and see me. <laughs> uh, the thing is, you actually know what happens to your students here. I can tell you where every graduate is working. I can tell you where they're going to school. The chairman of our Board of Regents went to Bay Mills, then he got a degree from Northern, then he got a degree from Michigan State, then he came back and he's working for the Bay Mills Indian Tribe and got elected to the Board of Regents and to the Executive Council of, of the Tribe. Now that's fabulous and that's what we do. And I know what happens to our students and that's why you do it. Well thank you for sharing some information about this very exciting institution of higher learning. Thank you. We've been visiting with Dr. Martha McLeod, the president of the Bay Mills Community College, Michigan's only accredited tribally controlled institution of higher learning.